The Daryl Makes Comic Adventure started three years ago. It actually started at a, at a music meeting. I went to have a music meeting with uh, Riggs Morales. Riggs Morales was Eminem's A&R over at Shady Records for the rise of that great empire. Um, I went to the meeting and he said, we was here for a music meeting. Before the meeting, he was like, yo, I'm usually very professional, I don't fan out. And he used these words. But DMC, you was like my superhero and this and that and run DMC and hip hop and all that. So he just asked me a simple question. He said, uh, what was it like when you was growing up? Well, I went to Catholic school my whole life and all I did was read and draw comic books. And when I said comic books, he was like, comic books? I was like, yeah, comic books. We, we ain't talk about no music. Sat there for three hours and just talked about comic books, what you was in there, what you was collecting, this and that. I told him, I, you know, I could draw and all of that. And he was like, wow. And he asked me, did you ever think about doing a comic book yourself? I was like, nah. He was like, why not? I said, because I don't want to be another rapper just because I got a hit record thinking I could do anything. I'm not going to be the rapper that's ruining and disrespecting the comic book culture. And he, was, he laughed it off and stuff like that. And then he was like, no, but you should do a comic book or whatever, whatever. And then he said, don't do it as DMC the celebrity. Because he said, yo, you just blew my mind for me to find out your first love was comic books. And then he said, D, you can do everything that you've done with your music and more in this form. And that kind of made me say, okay. So he said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you to Comic Con, New York City Comic Con. So he took me to New York City Comic Con. And when I walked in there, it was crazy. I walked in there and saw all the Marvel comic books that I sold to buy two turntables and a mixer. Because when I was a kid growing up, when hip hop came over the bridge, me and my brother, we had a problem. We didn't sell weed, so we had no money. So my brother, you know, he was older than me. He was like, here's what we're going to do. I didn't want to do it. We're going to do a comic book sale. That's how many books we had. Just about two turntables and a mixer. But when I walked into Comic Con, I, saw, I had that. I had, saw everything that I had. Then I saw Star Wars and Star Trek and everything, Lost in Space, everything that I grew up on. And then I saw what was going on now. And Briggs just looked at me and he said, in a year from now, you're going to have your own comic book here debuting. And a year later, we had it. Once Riggs convinced me to do the, um, that I should do the comic book, we said we're going to do this as a tribute and a celebration of what made comics dope, what made comics um, empowering the Riggs, what made comics great to me. So then he was like, I got this guy I need you to meet. So Riggs brought on this guy named Edgardo Miranda Rodriguez, who is like, the historian, Wikipedia, he, he's the whole brain of, I know that that issue, that artist, this writer, he, he's that dude because we want it to be authentic. Um, so when we went in to create the comic book, we said we want to have artists and writers who are known to the comic book culture and genre for the past and present. Also, we said we, we always going to have somebody that's legit. So people can say, yo, you got that writer, you got that writer. And um, we also want to have up and coming writers and artists and stuff like that. We want it to be authentic with everything that we do so that, you know, we want hip hop to respect us. We want comic book geeks, we want all the geeks and the nerds and comic book culture and the um, pop, um, pop culture genre to respect us. But at the same time, from our artistic point of view, you know, whether it's a writer, anchor, pencil, or whatever, we want to have those people, those entities, be the ones to do that. So that being said, the cool thing about it is we created this DMC universe. So the artist does the art. The artist draws and everything, they color everything. But once the artist draws the city, we bring in real graffiti artists to tag up what the artists created. And that way you bridge a connection. Because when, when I was little, and I was in these comic books, hip hop was kind of like the comic book coming to life. You know what I'm saying? When we, if you go back and look at all the old school graffiti written on the trains and stuff like that, it's like the comic book, it's like you open a comic book and it exploded and just jumped on the wall. So we want it to be authentic in all aspects of this production. Whatever dream somebody has or 
whatever passion or love that you had since you was a kid, do not let it die. It's worth something. And I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about financially worth something. It's worth more than diamonds and gold and money because that dream that you, the thing that inspired you to create your own personal little thing that was your thing, even if it doesn't make you a million dollars, it could touch a million people. When I started doing hip hop, I put my pencil down and pushed my sketch pads to the side. Fortunately, it worked out and I just started writing rhymes, but I realized my power in the hip hop universe as the mighty microphone master DMC devastating mic controller is all because of those comic books. So I don't care if it's G.I. Joe, I don't care if, like I said yesterday on the panel, if it's the Powerpuff Girls, I don't care if it's Doctor Who, those things are a part of you and they will lead to empowering you no matter what you're going through in life.